In today's video, I am going to show you how to get this stay all day makeup look perfect for a bride or mother of the bride using all drugstore products. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, at Lisa Monique Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. So I did get a lot of requests this summer for makeup that lasts all day, both for a bride and mother of a bride. And so in today's video, I'm going to talk about the products that I would use and show you how I get this look, which I know will last all day because these are all tried and true products uh, and the techniques that I used. So if you're using similar products or different shades, because obviously everyone has uh, different coloring, then uh, the techniques will really help make this look last all day. So it's very important when you want your makeup to last all day to properly prep your skin. So we did talk about, um, or I have talked about many times how I like to use the Embryo Lease uh, or the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream uh, as my moisturizing base. I also use the e.l.f. Holy Hydration uh, Face Cream as a hydrating base. So for a special occasion, and I don't have non high end on this, but I love my Dermatology Brightening Eye Masks. These are so soothing and moisturizing uh, to just wear underneath the eyes. It actually plumps up all of those fine lines and wrinkles and actually will make your makeup go smoother and your fine lines less noticeable for a couple of hours. So um, I do recommend um, you using some sort of eye mask or anything to plump up your skin before you get started. Okay, so my first step um, when I want all day makeup is I will use a gripping primer. And my favorite gripping primer is the e.l.f. It is the Power Grip Primer. This stuff will help your makeup last all day. So it is a cool gel. Uh, it leaves your face just slightly tacky. You do need to make sure you let it set for 30 seconds or so before you start uh, applying or putting on any other makeup on top of it. But I really feel like it's a good base. Uh, definitely want to concentrate on that T-zone if um, you have combination skin, and even my normal to dry skin, I actually make sure I get it over the T-zone. Um, I put a tad bit on my eyelid, like I have hooded eyes, but you wouldn't know it right now. Cause as I aged, I've lost that fat pocket there. So now it's just more skin. And <laughs> when I use something like a gripping primer or cream eyeshadows, it actually pulls the skin back if that makes any sense. I will also say everything that I'm suggesting, make sure you test it out before your special day and are comfortable with uh, using it and the wear time. So I do wanna point that out first. Okay, so after I've prepped my skin, then I'm gonna go in with my concealer. I like to do my concealer underneath my foundation because I have some hyperpigmentation spots that I am trying to uh, conceal. So I did go back and forth between the e.l.f. Uh, Hydrating Camo Concealer, which is a favorite of mine, and the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear, which is the one I chose because I know um, this is my shade right now. <laughs> so this one might be a little bit lighter for me right now. So this is my shade right now. That's what I used. I tapped it on underneath my eyes in the dark circles. If you have really dark circles, purple, um, purple it under the eyes, you need to use a color corrector first. Um, I did not use it today, but the Pixie Peach Primer, it's um, at Target. I, I know you can get it online. A lot of times I can't find it Target in store. So the peach color will neutralize the purple and blue undertones. So you wanna get your edges really nicely blended, but you don't want to wipe off what you're concealing. After that, I use my makeup sponge and I use a setting spray. Today I'm using the e.l.f. Stay All Day Blue Light Micro Setting Spray. Uh, there are several good setting sprays. I do have a setting spray video that I talk about, a lot of different uh, setting sprays, but I will spray it on my sponge and lightly dab it all over where I just put the concealer. I also use the concealer over my eyelids as an eyelid primer. I don't use specific eyelid primer. So I cannot recommend um, any of them as a tried and true because I just don't do it. I always use my concealer 
Um, and then again, I have used my just regular primer tapped on my eyelids uh, as a base. So once I have the setting spray on, I'm going to let it set um, for uh, just a little bit. And then I'm going to go over it with a powder to thoroughly set the concealer. I've used the, color, the Revlon Colorstay Blot Powder. It's a matte powder. I th really think the Colorstay line from Revlon um, is a really good long wearing line. There are a couple of lines in drugstore. The Colorstay, I love Elf, um, and then the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop I think are all really all day wear products. They are a little bit drying, which is why that moisture level at first um, in the beginning is so important. They're, they're more matte. And I think for all day wear, um, I tend to lean towards matte foundations and products. I just think they overall wear a little bit better. Uh, but again, um, you do want to test this out. And um, which one do I like that's not? Uh, the Wet n Wild foundation, the dewy foundation is not quite as matte. I also think it has really good all day wear. So you may want to experiment again before your special day or special occasion. So once I have my concealer on, if you have good skin, and I see so many people with really good skin, they might have just a little bit of redness or rosacea that they can cover up with that concealer. You might not need any additional foundation. So I would just play it by ear. If your skin looks all even after you use that concealer, that may be enough. I have a lot of hyperpigmentation and everything, and I like a little more coverage on my face. I like a medium coverage. Uh, so uh, today I use the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop. It's a full coverage foundation. I actually used it very lightly sparingly and kind of buff and buffed it in all over my face and my neck. It's important to go down your neck, especially if you have, you know, a kind of more open neckline with um, a, a gown that you might be wearing. So you do want to bring it down your neck uh, so it's a so it matches. Then after I buffed it in, I did tap just a little bit more on those areas that um, need a little more coverage. I'm not trying to wipe out all of my hyperpigmentation um, because I have both light spots and dark spots. Uh, if I try to wipe them out or make all even, it ends up just being like really, really heavy stage makeup, which is not what I'm trying to do. So after I get my foundation on completely, I then once again do a setting spray layer and I just pat it in. Next, we'll move on to the eyes. And I will say there are a couple of um, rules or a couple of philosophies when doing the makeup. So there, one is you do your eyes first. So if you have that fallout on your cheeks and everything, then you know, it's not, you're not ruining your foundation. And when I'm using like blacks or really deep blues or things that tend to have a lot of fallout, powdery fallout, I do use them on my eyes first or I end up having to retouch up my foundation. But for the neutral shades that I'm using today and in general, I usually apply my face makeup first. For the brows, this is not a tried and true product. So so this is one thing I'm, I'm talking about that's not tried and true. But when I'm doing special occasion, when I'm doing other people's makeup, I actually prefer to start with a powder brow product. Um, so this is the e.l.f. powder brow product because I think it's easier to just get the correct placement with powder. I find it easier to just take it at the inner eye and then just lightly pull it back and lightly do the same across the top and fill in with the powder and really get it down to the skin as a base. Now, usually I'm using uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills. I mean, I've got this big one because when I was doing makeup on my clients, uh, photography clients, um, I wanted a lot of variety, but I do love uh, the Anastasia brow powder. I think it is one of the best out there and it's very, very long lasting. That one is a tried and true uh, long lasting. The e.l.f. Um, again is not tried and true for how long lasting it is, but it doesn't really matter because then I go over it with a brow pencil just to make those little, um, little strokes. And the one that's been my favorite for a long time is a Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim. Um, I just feel like it fills in and does the little flicks really nice. The 
And the one I've really been enjoying is the Revlon Semi-Permanent Brow Ink. This is more of a liquid, but it also coats the lashes so you don't need to go over it with any other brow gel. Uh, and I really have been enjoying this one. This one does last all day. Then if I just use a brow pencil and powder, I do want to set it and I'll just use my e.l.f. Brow Lift. It's just a clear gel and I will just use that to brush my brows up and hold them in place. I like to bend a spoolie specifically for brows. So I do have two spoolies. I have my regular one, which I have not bent, uh, and then one that I bend. Let's move on to eyeshadow. I feel like for all day wear, it's a good idea to put a cream eyeshadow base. It doesn't have to be a cream. You can use one of those sticks. Uh, today I used the e.l.f. Uh, no Budge Shadow Stick, and I use the shade Rose Gold because, of course, I love rose gold uh, with everything. Uh, they do come in a lot of different shades. They also have come out with some matte shades, but I don't think they're very neutral. It does take a little bit to set down, so I got impatient and kind of tapped it with a little bit of powder to set it, but if you let it do its job and actually set down before you continue on with your eyes, uh, it does dry completely down. So if it's feeling a little tacky, it's not dry down. Uh, I did continue with this, this look while it was a little tacky. I was just trying to be very careful not to wipe it back off again. I actually like the way this shade looks on me the best full strength, so I don't really want to blend it off. Okay, so then over these eyeshadow sticks, I am using the e.l.f. Bite Size Eyeshadow. Uh, this one is in cream and sugar very very neutral this is a tried and true i know this is going to last me all day i like it because it had the light shades and i had darker shade for my outer corner when i'm doing the lid what i did was i took i took a flat and it's a pretty large flat shadow brush and some people might use this as a concealer brush but it's a fluffy shadow brush and i took the shimmer shade that's very similar to the one that i put as a base and i applied it all the way over my lid on both sides. And I took it up just a little bit into that transition area. Then, because this doesn't really have a good transition shade for me, I took my contour shade, and I think this is a really great hint to use your contour or your bronzer as your transition shade. And I took a fluffy brush after I applied my lid color. And so I'm not putting it in my crease because again, I have hooded eyes, even though it doesn't look like it today. Um, so I'm applying it up on this orbital bone. So then I did a nice little back and forth, blending it perfectly up towards my brow bone. Because I have natural color on my skin, I don't need a highlighter. If I did want to use a highlighter, this is where I would apply it. And I would take one of the highlight shades and put it just under the brow bone. I'll show you where I'd put it. Starting at like the arch going out and I would just tap it right at that highest point, and then I would go back and just make sure you're getting a nice soft transition. And then I will go in with my darker shade for my outer third, and I am going to use um, a sponge tip applicator for this because it is how I can get the most pigment applied to my eyes in the most precise manner. So I don't want my dark shadow going all over the place. And yes, you can use a small brush and you can tap it on and you can build it up and do the little circles and everything like that. I just find it's the fastest, easiest, and most precise for me to use that sponge tip applicator. And I'm looking and I'm looking where the uh, outer edge of my iris, and that's where I'm starting to put the eye shadow and I'm just bringing it into a little V out in that outer corner. And then I'm going to blend it by tapping the seam where the two colors meet with my brush. Tap, 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 tap. Kind of tap it in a little downward motions if you want, right on that edge. And then I'm wiping it off on a towel. And then I'm going to go from the inner corner to the outer corner once, twice, just to soften the edge and make sure it's blended. I don't want to go from the outer to the inner corner because I don't want my dark shadow to start moving across my entire lid, which tends to happen when I use a brush. Okay, so for eyeliner, I am using the Wet n Wild uh, eyeliner and it's the On Edge 
long wearing pencil and it is in wooden you know it's a brown and wooden you know i've talked about it before um rimmel also has um their scandal eyes it's also really long wearing these are exceptionally soft so i do find them a little bit more difficult to work with because i have to kind of do little dots and then smudge them out but it will last all day it'll still be on the next day uh, so these are my favorite. I've tried some of the others, the NYX and um, uh, Revlon that are a little bit harder pencils, so they're easier to blend, but I find these are longer lasting, the Rimmel and the Scandalize. Mascara, I don't wear a lot of waterproof mascaras, but I probably would for a wedding. Uh, the Maybelline Last Sational Sky High Waterproof. Uh, this one is really long lasting. It lasted me through a funeral uh, and I didn't have any smudging or smearing. Then uh, also, yeah, the Essence Lash Princess um, in waterproof also is a nice one. These aren't as thickening as my regular mascara, so I do need to go in with extra coats. Both of these are really good. Now, if it was a wedding, I probably would be wearing false lashes. I have to put my false lashes on before I start my makeup. So I didn't really address it. Um, I do curl my lashes before I try and put false lashes on. And the key word is try uh, because I'm not very good. I can put them on other people, no problem, but I have a hard time putting them on myself. Uh, so I would do them first because for me, sometimes I have to take them off and reposition and I just don't want it to mess up on my eye makeup or my concealer or foundation or anything like that. So I didn't address that, but if you are going to use false, false lashes, I would put them on first. I love the Ardell Demi Wispies. I think they're very natural. They add thickness and they look very special, but they're not too much. So next we're gonna do contour. I use the Essence Contouring Duo Palette because uh, I know it lasts all day. This is number 20 for the darker skin. I think they just have two palettes. And what I like to do is I like to take a smaller round brush that kind of fits right in underneath my cheekbone, start at the ear, go to the outer edge of the eye. And I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And when you think you have enough, because pictures and being out bright light, if you're outdoors, it tends to wash you out a little bit, then I would go in again. As a photographer, Blush and contour were the things, uh, the face was where people looked the most washed out. So the blush and contour, definitely people would put just enough to give you this beautiful natural flush in person, but that didn't always photograph well. If you're worried about having too much makeup while you're talking to people, then maybe just bring your blush and contour with you and apply a little bit more uh, for pictures, I'll kind of buff it off with a sponge or some powder uh, for the reception. My rule of thumb is when I get enough that I think looks good, then I go back in again and put a little bit more on. Blushes, I think um, there's some really great long wearing blushes. If you like cream blushes, this is a Milani Cheek Kiss in Nude Kiss. This is um, for fairer skins. Uh, I can wear this, it's really a, a nice neutral flush for me, but it doesn't necessarily uh, look like I have a, a lot of blush or anything like that. Um, the Merlot Moment is really my favorite for color. Uh, the NYX Sweet Cheeks, this is in Bang Bang. This blush lasts all day too. So this is kind of a darker shade, really, really pretty. And then the other ones that last all the time are the Milani Cheek Kiss in the tube. And this one is in 140 Rose Romance. And that's what I am wearing uh, today. I did use, I do put it on the back of my hand because I find it harder to apply and it's harder to blend off because it is a, almost a stain. So I put it on the back of my hand and I kind of blend it out in my hand. I still even find my first dab is gonna to be too much. So I'll dab it on my wrist and then I'll start dabbing and then I'll go to the second cheek and dab and blend and then go back and kind of blend out that first cheek. So that's just my technique with the liquid, um, liquid blushes. Okay, we're almost done. We are going to talk about lips. I always have to wear a lip gloss. There are very few lip pencils that stay on underneath a gloss. Uh, the Revlon Colorstay Longwear Lip Liner is one of them. So besides outlining my lips, I also will color in with this color because I don't want my lipstick to wear away and then just all day I have in a, a line because this stays on all day. Uh, then I 
pick a similar shade lipstick. I am wearing this L'Oreal Varnished Rosewood number 904. It's one of their little shinier, glossier ones. Again, because I like gloss, I think it helps my def deflated lips. My lips are getting crinkled and deflated. I think it helps minimize that look. So this varnished rosewood looks great over my lip liner, which was color mauve. And then for gloss, I wanted to, again, keep matching the tones. This is the Sexy Mother Pucker. I really hate that name. Um, by Soap and Glory. And this shade is Plump. Uh, so that's what I'm wearing on my lips. What I do next, and this is kind of important, I would, before I set everything, you know I've set my foundation and my concealer already. So before I do any finishing, I will do my hair because sometimes that will affect how, I, how my makeup looks or how I want my makeup. So I will, Go ahead and have my hair. Then I will go by the window with a mirror and look at it and make sure that it, I don't have any harsh lines, everything's blended out okay, that I think everything, that I have my eyeliner somewhat even. I will take a picture with my phone. Um, I have the iPhones that you can do a flash on forward on selfie mode. Uh, if you don't, maybe have someone else take a picture, a flash, you wanna take a flash photo, make sure none of the products are flashing back. I fine. These do not flash back everything I've recommended on me, but you, you do want to just be sure that you're not going to get flashback if you're going to be doing uh, pictures. Uh, then I also just take a picture in natural light and look and make sure that I still can see um, my face makeup and that everything looks good. And then once I decide everything is great, I am going to set my face with a pressed powder. And this one is the NYX can't stop, won't stop. I, you know, have my own little puff that I bought on Amazon. You can get these little puffs on drugstore and I'm patting it where I want it. And I do like to soften the edges of my blush a little bit. I don't really put it over where my contour and everything is because I don't want to take that off, but I will do the upper edges. I will pat it and press it on my eyeshadow. I actually put it everywhere that I want. I lightly take off the excess with a soft fluffy brush and then I'm going to spray with the setting spray. And I am going to, and I'm using the e.l.f. Stay All Day setting spray. I'm going to spray whole face once. I'm going to kind of get it everywhere. I'm going to let it absorb. I'm holding my breath because I hate breathing in setting spray. Sometimes I'll move away to take a breath, uh, come back, and then I will spray it a second time. So I do like two coats of setting spray over my powder, and I think it kind of takes down to that powder look. And so my face and foundation, it's gonna have this kind of natural glow, even though I've been using matte products um, for the next several hours. And this is it. This is my special occasion makeup. If I had false lashes, it would really make the eyes pop a little bit more, like maybe if I was a bride or something like that. But I really, for mother of the bride or a guest or something like that, I still want to look like me. I just want it to last a lot longer all day, all night. And this is how I get that effect. I will bring my powder and my lipstick or lip gloss with me in my purse or little clutch. Um, I can fit it in the smallest of bags. And that's it. Let me know what you think of this look. Let me know if you have a special occasion coming up. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.